do subscribe to ikeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos so hello and good afternoon students we'll be talking about the work done by the impeller today here we've already seen there are different types of efficiencies now let's uh, talk about the work done by the impeller and the velocity diagrams so let's talk about the work done before directly going on to work done let's see uh, how uh, the velocity diagram looks like so when we were studying turbines so centrifugal pumps is nothing but it is uh, the exact opposite of turbines so since we had velocity triangles in turbines here also we'll be having velocity triangles so let's see how the velocity triangle of a pump looks looks like So as you can see, I have drawn two triangles: the inlet triangle and the outlet triangle. The inlet triangle is or the inlet side is always radial, so you can see uh, they are perpendicular to each other. Suppose in the question in the numerical, it states that the outside, the outer uh, end is also radial, so you need to draw the same over there. Also, it has to be perpendicular at the outer end. Here, when I'm drawing, I'm assuming that the inlet is radial and the outlet is not radial; it is having some angle. So, if in the question, if in numerical, it states that the outlet is also radial, you need to draw likewise uh, the inlet triangle. It has to be perpendicular. Now, we'll draw the triangles. Let's name them. We all know that there are different velocities like radial, <coughs> like velocity, uh, the absolute velocity and the relative velocity and the velocity of the blade. The black part, as you can see here, is the impeller, the blade of the impeller, and these two are the inlet and the outlet triangles. Now let's uh, fill the diagram. Now as you can see here the diagram is complete. So we have two velocities at both the ends. The radial, uh, the absolute velocity have numbered it as V1 and the uh, relative velocity that is Vr1. <coughs> and U1 is the velocity of the impeller at the inlet side. So you have V1, Vr1 and U1. So uh, since the blade is also moving, the jet is also moving, the, uh, there comes relative velocity and the, the angle alpha and theta. So alpha is the angle made by the horizontal with the absolute velocity and theta is the angle made by the uh, horizontal with the relative velocity. Similarly, you have at the outlet triangle also, phi is the angle made by the uh, horizontal with the relative velocity and beta is the angle made by the horizontal with the absolute velocity so these are the four angles that you have here u1 is nothing but the velocity of the blade at the inlet side u2 is the velocity of blade at the outlet side now we all know we have already seen in, uh, in turbines that the uh, the components of absolute velocity gives you the uh, the flow component and the whirl component so as you can see here at the inlet v1 is all is already a component along the vertical direction so you cannot have any component along the horizontal so v1 itself becomes vf1 and the whirl component at the inlet side is zero uh, at the outlet side the absolute velocity is inclined so you can have two components so as you can see here i have drawn the two components of the uh, velocity the first horizontal component is vw2 and the vertical component is vf2 so the world component at the outlet side is not zero in this triangle so there are uh, examples like 
there are examples in which you can have VW2 also equal to 0 but in this particular triangle you have VW2 and VF2 and VW1 is equal to 0 so if the question states that the outlet is also radial then you cannot then VW2 also becomes 0 it all depends on the type of question that is asked the velocity diagram keeps on changing so here I have assumed that the inlet is radial and the outlet is not radial and the diagrams look like this so this is all about the diagram now let's move on to the forces and the work done the force exerted is nothing but it is similar to as we saw in turbines so the formula is exactly same because turbines and pumps work on the same principle for a turbine we give the water moves the impeller here the impeller moves the water so the formula of force remains the same so if you remember this was the formula for the force exerted by the uh, jet on the impeller so f is equal to m dot vw2 minus vw1 it comes from the newton second law of motion that is nothing but the rate of change of momentum is equal to force now uh, we are not interested in force we are interested in work done so work done is nothing but force into the distance move per second so distance move per second is nothing but velocity which we write as u So we were uh, looking at forces, uh, so force is nothing but m dot vw2 minus vw1 which is similar to the uh, cases that we saw in turbines, formula of force remains the same. Now once you got the force, now let's move on to the work done. Work done is nothing but force into distance move per second and distance move per second is nothing but u. So this is the formula of work done by the centrifugal pump. So now next is you can you can modify this formula and write like you can uh, write m dot as rho into q uh, because mass flow rate is nothing but rho times q. Now let's uh, look back at the triangle the velocity triangle let's go back to it as you can see here vw1 is equal to zero at the inlet side so vw1 is always zero at the inlet side so paper takes it so as you can see here vw1 is equal to zero at the inlet so let's use the same logic let's put vw1 equal to 0 at the inlet side and uh, let's see what happens with the formula so this vw1 is always 0 for centrifugal pump and depending on the cases v w2 can or it cannot be 0 depending on the question so let's put vw1 equal to 0 now you get work done is equal to so this is a formula of work that you get rho q vw2 u2 this work done is nothing but it is work done per second sometimes uh, the examiner is interested in work done per unit weight of the fluid so you can even find that also this work done is nothing but work done per second Now let's see what uh, work done per unit weight will look like.
so let's see uh, what work done per unit weight is we've already seen what is work done per second that is uh, nothing but rho q v w 2 u 2 now let's talk about work done per unit weight of the fluid So, that, uh, weight work done, uh, weight of the fluid is nothing but rho Q into G. Now, as you can see here, rho and Q can be cancelled. So, this is nothing but the work done per unit weight. VW2 U2 by G and work done per second is rho Q VW2 U2. So these are the important formulas of work done that you need to remember for the numericals. Now we've seen the different three efficiencies. We've seen uh, the force, the value of force that is imparted on the jet because of the impeller. We've seen work done per second. We've seen work done per unit weight. So that was all about this topic work done and forces. So I hope you've understood this. Now we'll use this. We will use all the formulas in our in our question session in the numerical sessions. So I hope you've understood. Thank you.